Good evening and welcome, friends. Today is the second talk of the August edition of the ACNS webinars. And for this talk, we are extremely fortunate to have with us one of the giants of intervention neuroradiology. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please introduce you to the president of the Asia Australasia Federation of Intervention Therapeutic Neuroradiologic Society, Professor Shigeru Miyachi. Professor Miyachi is a professor and director of Neuroendovascular Therapy Center. Aichi Medical University Hospital, Aichi, Japan. To chair this session, we have one of the leading intervention neuroradiologists from Nagoya, Professor Takazi Izumi. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I welcome both the chair and the speaker, Professor Miyachi, to this online platform of ACNS webinars. Now, may I please request Professor Miyachi to start his webinar lecture. Thank you, Raja, so, to invite me for the such a so very wonderful webinar meeting. So I think uh, I'm uh, talking about the embolization of the brain ABM using a different liquid material technique, complication, and management. Yeah, so I introduced my uh, so university that is located in Nagakute city. That is between the Nagoya city and the Toyota city. Toyota city is a, so the, the famous for the, so, so vehicles. And uh, so Aichi Prefecture is the center of the Japan. And uh, this is um, our university. This is located in the just the east edge of the Nagoya city. And uh, that is a um, very rural area. <laughs> so that is a good, uh, good nature and uh, so very uh, comfortable situation. So uh, I talk about the so embolization so before the radio surgery, uh, surgery and the radio surgery, and then I, I talk about the role of the embolization. So before the surgical extirpation, the targets of embolization is uh, so embolize deep seated feeder and a high flow fissure to to reduce the shunt, and also the this is important, the aneurysms independent from the surgical field. That, and sometimes uh, that is uh, the source of the breeding of the ABM. So we must uh, so embolize, we must occlude the aneurysms before the uh, surgery. For example, that is an emergent embolization case, 27 year female it with a big hematoma in the left cerebrum fissure. And that is a very high flow fissure here. And also um, uh, so fed by the perforator, the reticular serrated arteries. So we embrace the main feeders from the MCA and also as well as the uh, uh, perforators. Just, that's just before, just after the embolization. And uh, so in the same day that we uh, so remove the ABM, and uh, this is a very hemorrhagic uh, surface, and uh, and we uh, so remove the hematoma. And uh, so that is a so nidus with the nidus. You see that this is a perforator that is embolized, but no breeding because then that was so completely embolized. So it is a, this embolization is a, a big lure to reduce the, from, to reduce the intraoperative hemorrhage from the deeper side. So that we want to embolize the deep, deep seated feeders embolization is so, be, so important. And this is after the extirpation of the ABM. This is another case of the big uh, corpus callosum ABM also the with an intraventricular hemorrhage. This is also the young young male. And uh, so the, you 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 know the name of the Dr. Tanigawa. He is working in the Sapporo. This is a very very big and a very famous uh, vascular neurosurgeon. And but so he requested me. So we uh, he uh, he operated uh, as soon as possible. So just before the, uh, the day uh, of operation, operation day, please embrace uh, as much as possible. This is, this is a very, <laughs> very uh, big uh, request, but uh, this is a very difficult request. 
So you see the big uh, sonidas with uh, many, many intranidal aneurysms. And uh, that is also located in the up, uh, anterior part of the corpus callosum. That is so, so big, so grade five ABM. You see the so a lot of uh, aneurysm here and also here, so many, many one. I think that is a so rupture source. And so uh, we navigate the microcassette to the fetus, so many fetus, uh, anyway, many fetus, and the embryo's uh, glue. Uh, you see that this is uh, uh, penetrated to the intranidal aneurysm and also to the nidus. And so we repeated this uh, procedure 14 times. So we, uh, this is after the embryization. Uh, 14 feeders in one session. This is a so very crazy <laughs> way. But, because, but next day, uh, Dr. Taniga wants to operate it. But anyway, uh, this is operation uh, that's good. Uh, you see the no breathing. This is very easy because so many, many feeders were embraced. So a little bit uh, so hard, but uh, he can cut the feeders very easy. And so, so also, oh, of course, uh, he is a so good neurosurgeon. So, this is looks very, e very easy. But uh, uh, after the operation, he uh, sent the video and he told me this is very uh, embryonization was very helpful to to facilitate the operation because uh, no harm harmful uh, intraoperative bleeding. So anyway, okay. Anyway, this is a. Hmm? So, yeah. Yeah. And just this is after the operation. So, all the nodes was removed. And uh, so no, uh, new, no new deficit uh, after the operation. And he walked, uh, he discharged on, on, on foot. It was uh, very nice. So this is a uh, so cooperation of the so endovascular and the surgery. Uh, this is just uh, before the embolization. This is a final angiogram after the 14 feet of, of uh, embolization. And so this is a post -operative. So in such a so grade five, even in the such a grade five ABM, the, the, the embolization with a so big load of to facilitate the operation. So next, uh, the target of embolization for before radio surgery, of course, the nidus, high flow fistula, because high flow fistula is uh, not good for the so early occlusion after the radio surgery. So we must stop the high flow fistula. Uh, also, meningeal feeders is uh, so so difficult to occlude. There's a very less effect of the radio surgery, and also the associated aneurysm in the high risk of rupture. This is a uh, scheme of the components of the ABM, and uh, intranidal aneurysm was such a nidus or daughter nidus will be is all the targets of the embolization, and. Uh, Associated aneurysm of ABM uh, was classified for three patterns, intranidal aneurysm and proximal feed aneurysm and flow-related aneurysm. Intranidal aneurysm is uh, very, high, uh, very risky and uh, so high, high frequent, uh, frequently rupture. So we must embolize using glue together with feeder. Proximal feed aneurysm is in the sacra packing. This is the same situation of the usual inter, uh, rupture aneurysm, uh, intracranial rupture aneurysm. So the, we, uh, we pack uh, coils inside this one. But the flow related aneurysm, that one, is, that is uh, usually observed. 
observed because that is uh, intradigital annuals. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, neither embolization uh, is has a priority to embolize, and after that, the spontaneous will shrink. Uh, this related annuals will shrink, so that we can observe it. For example, this is a so proximal feeder aneurysm, and this this patient has a subarachnoid hemorrhage, no intracellular hemorrhage. So I think uh, this is the source of the bleeding of this aneurysm. Uh, we pack the cord here first, and then the uh, nidus will be, uh, be embraced. This is a flow-related aneurysm. We can observe, we can observe, but uh, that is very close to the nidus. So we embrace the, uh, this flow-related aneurysm uh, uh, together with the nidus. And this is after the embryo. This is a typical intranidal aneurysm, and this is a rupture one with the thalamic hemorrhage. So we embraced it uh, with the microcatheter, uh, nidus, as well as the uh, as well as the, an the aneurysm. So this is after the embryo, and he goes to the uh, radio surgery after the embryo. This is another case of the four uh, year girl, also the breeding case. And you see the internet aneurysm here, here. So this is a, so clearly this is the source of the breeding. So we embrace the, the, this aneurysm and nidus with a so very diluted glue. This is after the embryo. So all of the nidus will be embraced, but we uh, we refer to this young girl to the gamma knife. This is a schema of uh, ideal embryization. Total packing or total embryization of the nidus, this is very nice. But the other is uh, just before the nidus, all the nidus, uh, just all the feeders uh, are embryized just before the nidus. Maybe it promotes the spontaneous thrombosis of the nidus. This is also the idea. This is not a good one, inadequate embryization. For example, this is a pro too proximal from the nidus. That is a high risk of the migration of the glue to the normal feeders, uh, normal arteries. And also, this is a very catastrophic uh, so embryization. Uh, the, all the embryonic material so moving to the drainage side. So that is only the packing of the drainage, no nidus. This is a very risky, dangerous situation. It is so neither pressure will be elevate and rupture. So th this is a, a very uh, dangerous one. And also, so that we must, we always, we always seek to seek to embolize the neither packing, and uh, neither packing will promote the flow reduction in drainage. And that is usually normalization of the cortical drainage and the booster effect of radio surgery and the spontaneous thrombosis of remnant nidus. This is a good uh, so course to the spontaneous cure. And also spontaneous drainage thrombosis and, and uh, uh, a part of the, these cases goes to the good course for the spontaneous thrombosis, but uh, so drainage thrombosis is sometimes uh, to the very aggressive way. Go to the aggressive way. congestion of the remnant nidus and so that is the rupture because of the nidus, uh, remnant nidus pressure uh, will elevate. This is a case of normalization of the drainage route. You see the uh, parietal, parietal ABM is here. And this is the main drainer, and another uh, sub main drainer is here. That is a second second drainer. After the embryization, you see that this drainer we, uh, is now used as a normal drainage from the cortical vein. So that is normalized feeder. It is a good sign. And maybe that is a, a, the high, uh, we can. Uh, expect uh, the high rate of the complete occlusion after radiosurgery. 
So angiography feature just after the embryization, at, at, in, when we consider this one, factor of the promotion of shrink with spontaneous thrombosis is a drastic flow change of drainage, drainage pattern, drainage system. The vascularization of the embryo's area is it is also important, but uh, so the drainage pattern, change of the drainage pattern is very important. Uh, this is our case of the summary of the, our case. If the, we can successfully, we can do the successful nidus embryization. So the drainage uh, nidus size is a, so uh, dramatically decrease. But uh, proximal, only the proximal occlusion, that is uh, uh, after the radiosurgery, this is not de decrease. So rather increase. Because uh, this is a temporary, temporary uh, decrease of the nidus uh, size, but it looks as a good, it looks successful. But uh, the other uh, uh, recruitment of, from the other feeders, so the, the development, and so that is uh, maybe the same size of so re, re, uh, re, return to the uh, previous size. So, uh, so uh, nidus symbolization is so important. And uh, uh, we use uh, the so histacryl, the glue, and BCA uh, for the. So embryization, and, uh, we uh, we like it. This this one, and uh, this is a mixture of the repeal dough. And uh, usually we uh, so heat uh, to the, such a mixture of the NBC and uh, repeal dough to decrease the uh, viscosity. And uh, so neither embryization is like here. And uh, if the neither embryization is successful like this, here is a good good one. So just after the, uh, the oh, sorry, just before the radio surgery, the nidus is marked decrease, more decrease in size. And uh, after the radio surgery, this is successful occlusion, total occlusion. On the other side, this is non-effective nidus embryization. You see the very diffuse type of the parietal embryo, parietal AVM here, here. But uh, we cannot uh, so access uh, the feeders to the nidus. This is too proximal. We inject the glue from the very proximal part of, uh, of the feeder. That's only the proximal occlusion. You see, but uh, you can see that after the three stage embryonization, it looks good, good devascularization. So it looks like a good embryization, but no, that is before the radio surgery, you see the recovery of the nidus. This is recruiting this one, the other feeders going to the nidus because the nidus is still living here, not only the feeder occlusion. So in such a non-effective nidus embryization, it's not good for the radio surgery. And, but uh, in, uh, in another so pitfall of the radio surgery, we have done two cases of the, this, such a dangerous early occlusion of the drainers after radio surgery. In case with the remnant nidus and the abrupt occlusion due to the positive effect in the entry of the main drainer. You see the, so the 11 year old uh, boy, so in the so deep cerebrum AVM, and so we embryos uh, uh, five or six feeders from the MCA, but still remaining anterior corridor artery feeders, and this is a deep drainage. So we refer to the radio surgery. But uh, after the radio surgery, I think he was uh, intact, but uh, so two years after radio surgery, so suddenly it's ruptures. Why? You see the, this deep drainage uh, to the internal cerebral vein to the straight sinus is occluded. I think uh, the radio surgery very effective to decrease the size and as well as the draining root occlusion. 
So, so that's the remaining dinosaur with lobster. So, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so now, such a, in such a case, recent reports have posed doubts about the effect of pre radiosurgical embolization. So that is a very behind for us. So it makes it, um, so we investigate whether the performance and the quality of embolization may influence the success of radiosurgery based on a retrospective case cohort study. This is, uh, it called the JREL study. And uh, so the chair, uh, uh, Dr. Izumi is also is, uh, participating in this uh, uh, study in the Japanese uh, registry of radio surgery following embolization for AVM. And uh, so the, this is the background. Useful of embolization uh, bef uh, before radio surgery. So many, many papers, but this is a very old one. Uh, and plus, plus radio surgery is successful 90%. So it, uh, other paper is 80%. It looks good. But this recent paper is, a, so this is a rather uh, so decrease to so disturb the occlusion rate. For example, uh, embolization for radio surgery 47, radio surgery around 66%. The other, other paper is also. So the radio surgery alone is better than the, so with the case of with the embolization. This is a very uh, contra part of the, uh, so uh, blaming. So uh, they consider the causes of negative effect of pre radiosurgical embolization. Embolization blurs the NIDAS margin and it may cause the targeting error. A part of the NIDAS looks disappear just after the proximal feed occlusion due to the temporary flow regression. I, I, so I showed the one case of in such an uh, ineffective embolization. The part out of the radiosurgery target may later recanalize due to hemodynamic remodeling. And also other paper shows the causes of harm, harmful embolization, factors to decrease the efficacy of ABM radiosurgery following embolization is a hypoxia mediated angiogenesis. So I, I, don't, I don't think so, but uh, the, su such a uh, uh, so very insufficient embolization will cause the, such an, uh, and will promote angiogenesis. Inflammatory mediated angiogenesis, that, that is due to the chemical effect of the uh, embolic material. And hemodynamic mediated angiogenesis. And this is also, also the insufficient proximal, proximal feed occlusion. Angiogenesis after embolization increase, so negative effect for radiosurgery. So we check, uh, we harvested the 73 patients uh, so for the embolization plus gamma knife case. And the successful group is a 44 patients. Non-successful occlusion group is 29 patients. This is very strict uh, so classification. And this is a clinical data profile. And uh, so, with classification of the grade of a radio surgery result to three grade, A, B, C, and A is a complete occlusion. And B and C, is a B is a remaining small vascular network, but no shunt. And it, is, it looks, uh, uh, maybe the so occlusion, maybe occlude, but uh, with this is strict uh, uh, classification. And the grade C is a remnant nidus with AB shunt. You can see this is a grade A. Here is ABM after embolization. This is after radiosurgery, complete occlusion. Grade B is a here after embolization. And it looks nice, but still remaining a vascular network, no shunt. Grade C is here after embolization, still remaining shunt here, very small shunt. But, but not uh, the complete occlusion. So in this, uh, according to this classification, uh, 44 is a successful, 29 is a non-successful. And we analyzed uh, what is the, cause, uh, the important point to differentiate these groups. And uh, so we check uh, uh, embolization grade. So 
um, this is very uh, complicated. So uh, to understand easily, so A1 is a so good embolization. So more than 50% uh, of the guidance embolization. Grade C is uh, not so good and uh, only the uh, feed occlusion. So this one is A1, A2, B1, B2, C. And uh, so for example, this is a grade A1, a good embolization of the, so good penetration of the nidus. So that is a small uh, remaining nidus after the embolization, but uh, larger surgery one year, so totally occluded. So good embolization is resulting in the good uh, effect, good uh, radiosurgical uh, result. And uh, on contrary, this is a non-effective group. This is a diffuse uh, occipital ABM. And uh, just after the embolization, that is uh, still remaining. And also still, uh, the small shunt is remaining. So this is the embolization grade is very low. Uh, and also the radiosurgical uh, result is uh, not good. So two, uh, point, two, point, two factors, performance of successful size reduction. Size reduction is a, so a successful group is um, so most of half of the uh, cases are successful size reduction. But a non-successful non -successful group is a, a size reduction, a, a, they failed uh, the size reduction. And uh, another factor is the performance of successful NIDAS embryization. So as I said, uh, the embryization grade here. So successful group is a NIDAS embryization is a so two thirds of the cases of the NIDAS embryization is uh, performed. But non-successful group is uh, only 10% of the NIDAS embryization. So if we, so if we perform the NIDAS embolization it's a completely that we can uh, we can expect the uh, total occlusion of the radio surgery so I'm sorry and problem of the both modalities so in the vascular side is a temporary occlusion with delayed recanalization insufficient flow reduction and the target embolization Radio surgical side is a misjudged target planning, insufficient marginal dose, short interval from embryos. And, and so to uh, reduce uh, to reduce such an uh, uh, failure, uh, radio surgical radio surgeon considers uh, some strategies. So innovation, one is a target for original size, including embryos size and volume stage the radio surgery and uh, pre embolization radio surgery and now it is it's an ongoing study so it means a uh, radio surgery uh, so the targets the uh, whole size of the abm and then the, the embolization yeah, this uh, aneurysm which looks like a 6 5 mm aneurysm and uh, the first point Please continue, Professor. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so conclusion, this is a, the, our paper. So the, uh, the proper embolization with a high rate of nidus penetration to avoid recanalization is important for complete, complete combined treatments. So a proper strategy and technique is essential for promoting occlusion of following radio surgery. So the next, uh, next topic is uh, how we can uh, use the uh, embryonic material. So how we differentiate to the, the, the cases for uh, onicus or NBCA. Uh, actually, the radiosurgical, uh, before the radiosurgery, uh, onicus embolization is not allowed in Japan. So that we all, we embolize uh, the, all the cases before radiosurgery using NBCA. But, uh, before surgery, it's a plexiform type and simple course and superficial type, non-elocant type. This is good for the onyx, uh, good indication for the onyx. 
you see the only case is HLM vinyl alcohol copolymer and the solvent is a dimethyl sulfoxide, D dim soap, and including the tantalum powder. And this is a grayish uh, embryonic material and uh, it's a penetrating so very deeply to the nidus. And uh, th this strategy is, uh, this is a microcatheter and uh, only is in injected a, a little bit uh, in the proximal side of the nidus. And this is a plug and uh, it, uh, so disturbs the uh, flow here, and then so slowly inject uh, so to penetrate the uh, pole nidus. And, and if the, the successful uh, filling of the nidus with onikis, we uh, bring back of the, the uh, microcatheters. And uh, this, uh, Onikis embolization is uh, so evaluated by Hedens Nimi, that is uh, very helpful for the microsurgery. And uh, this is our case, uh, middle size of uh, occipital AVM, uh, left side. And uh, this case has also the feeder aneurysm in the anterior communicating artery. So uh, this is not a feeder, <laughs> but uh, this, this is a co coincidental uh, aneurysm. Uh, but firstly, we embryo uh, its coils here, and then injected the onikis to from the uh, MCA and uh, PCA. And this is just after the embryization. This is an onikis cast. I show the. So this is a very high speed. Uh, video, and uh, you can see the onikis is uh, penetrating to the nidus gradually. Yeah, so uh, this is science. But uh, just to retrie uh, after retrieving retrieving a uh, microcatheter, a uh, small uh, so re retracting uh, injury and uh, small subarachnoid hemorrhage, but no symptoms. Uh, ma many papers of, of the effect of uh, onikis embolization and the occlusion rate is um, about uh, 60 percent. Or well, this paper was a complete cure is a 48 percent with an onikis alone. Total occlusion is a 51 percent. Uh, this is from the Taki, uh, Dr. Sachi. Isiru Sachi, there are so many, a uh, lot of cases and it's a, it's a very surprising uh, uh, occlusion rate. And the many papers, and uh, this is summarized. NBCA has a uh, very small rate of uh, total occlusion, less than 10%. In my uh, own experience, about 7% in the total occlusion only in embolization with NBCA. But you see the onikis embolization is a so maximum 53% of the angiographic cure. And the mod, mod, mid mortality rate is not so uh, different uh, between two, two uh, embryonic materials. But uh, so, so some problems in onikis embolization, uh, longer fluoroscopic time, so high radiation dose. And this is not a good indication for the high flow of feeders because the uh, onyx is not uh, so this uh, not a growing effect. So that is moving to the drainers easily dr moving. We for far distant and tortured feeders because then the uh, uh, glue embolization is a uh, we pull the microcatheter immediately after the uh, reflux to the the proximal side, we remove the microcatheter, but uh, so only kiss embolization is uh, firstly we making a plug, so just around the catheter chip, so that is uh, sometimes uh, very difficult to retrieve, and sometimes to injure the uh, uh, injure the feeders. Inadequate for pre radiosurgical use, the risk of recanalization and a strong artifact on CT and MRI.
that is uh, difficult to detect the recurrence. So this is um, uh, a complication case. Uh, this is not uh, uh, our institute, uh, the, the, the other one, but uh, you see the frontal chip uh, ABM here, and this is uh, ABM NIDAS, occluding uh, the feeder uh, from this feeder and from this feeder uh, with the neonic is here. And, so very st big stagnation. You see the so all all the part of the nidus was embraced. Very slow uh, shunt now. You see the very stagnation of the drainers. It looks and uh, uh, we hope uh, the spontaneous uh, thrombosis of the nidus. So just after the embryization, you see the very high. Uh, artifact from the uh, this onyx because of the tantal powder. But you see the next day, it's a big hematoma. So the antas was uh, ABM rupture. And that's just after the uh, removal of the uh, ABM. Of course, that is very easy to remove it because the onyx was uh, so totally uh, filled in, inside the nidus. But actually, that, that is a, the pitfall and the, the, some uh, the complication. And uh, also, the pitfall of onyx embryization is a uh, uh, cranial nerve palsy. That, for example, the trigeminal nerve mandibular segment neuralgia. I think that is a. Uh, Due to the side effect of the DMSO, DMSO, this is a, a very toxic for the uh, cranial nerves. And also, the, I, I showed the, a big arch factor of the CT scan and also the MRI. Uh, that, is a, that may cause a planning error for radiosurgery. So, uh, so the only case embolization is not. Uh, so good indication for before the radiosurgery. And also risk factors for rupture due to the change of drainage pattern and the flow, flow following embryization. Uh, um, yeah, for example, drain occlusion stenosis due to the migration of imbric materials, alteration to the deep drainage pattern and extremely uh, stagnating drainage flow in the early stage of embolization, remnant rupture the barracks. In such a case, in, in these cases, we must, uh, embolize, the, we must embolize more uh, as soon as possible, or we must consider to the emergent surgical extirpation. Otherwise, uh, there's a big hematoma, uh, the high risk of a big hematoma. So measures to avoid the complication due to the impairment of the drainage system, Nidus embolization, deep CT embolization, stage embolization, and troubleshooting for the angry ABM. Angry ABM means uh, the drainage occlusion and the nidus pressure, pressure is increasing. Uh, so immediate transarterial flow reduction or emergency surgical extirpation. Uh, we uh, so I uh, introduced the other. Uh, embolization technique in the recent uh, uh, period, recent days. Uh, first, the balloon assisted technique. Sept balloon catheter is available for the onyx embolization. This balloon catheter is occlude the uh, feeder flow. So that's no need to make a plug to control the, flow, uh, control the flow of the feeders. So if the possible, the, we use a sept balloon catheter to the, uh, just before the uh, night us. And this technique is usually used for the occlusion of the dural AV fissure, marathon or septicy. Second one is a double catheter. So maybe the two feeders, 
uh, one by one, it is okay. But uh, if the, we can uh, advance, we can uh, access to the two, two feeders, the so double uh, microcatheter and the simultaneously injected the onikis, it is uh, so more effective. <laughs> and uh, also the meningeal feeders should be uh, occluded. Well, this is double catheters, uh, one and two, and uh, so, so very good uh, penetration of the onikis to the nidus from here to here, uh, from here and from here. And uh, this is um, so very effective and the double catheter technique is 100% of the occlusion. Uh, so his, you know, <laughs> according to his uh, paper. And uh, another paper with 94% of the complete cure. So such an uh, so advanced uh, uh, technique, microcatheter technique will increase the uh, uh, complete cure rate in the only embolization alone. And now the, the biggest topic in the ABM embolization is the transvenous approach. So in the so Western, particularly in, in France, uh, from the venous route, from the drainage route, that is access to the just, just after, just distal to the uh, nidus. And uh, of course, the arterial part of the flow control is necessary. And uh, just uh, after the, uh, no, no, no. Uh, after the feeder embolization, as much as possible, uh, access the uh, microcatheter from the venous root, and then the, under the blood pressure, it's a hyp uh, hypo hypotension. So it grew, uh, grew no, no, only kiss injected from the venous side to the nidus. It looks at the very dangerous, very dangerous, and also uh, this uh, grew, uh, no, no, only kiss is. Uh, flow out to the drainage side. So this microcaster is trapped, will be trapped, will be trapped by uh, onikis. But uh, it is uh, good uh, because uh, feeders are many feeders and also this is the very functional perforators in, the, in this case, only single drainage. From the drainage route is a high potential and a high percentage of the uh, nidus embolization. So the, you, you see that this is a final uh, cast of the ronikis and complete reocclusion. So if we uh, so successfully control the arterial flow and transvenous uh, embolization is a uh, successfully penetrate, penetrate uh, to the nidus. Uh, so very nice uh, embolization technique. But uh, you see the, uh, this catheter will be trapped. So this one is a detachable microcatheter. In this approach, the microcatheter should be, so, uh, should remain here. And this was detached and the, the proximal part will be removed, but uh, the chip of the microcatheter is still here. So, uh, transarterial embolization is um, good, but uh, uh, no, transvenous appro approach is uh, has an advantage, is a time saving. No need to explore uh, all accessible feeders, less is risk. So, of course, the transarterial embolization has a high risk of the migration of the uh, embryonic materials, high cure rate. But the limitation is a much variety and the poor anatomy of the venous system. And also that is a reflux part. So uh, it is difficult to access it. Changed and masked and architecture is proceeded TAE. Difficult or best positioning of microcatheter, less trackability, 
risk of penetration of thin venous wall, risk of bleeding due to the incomplete occlusion of nidus and normal drainage. This is a big point. If the transvenous embolization is not, uh, not allowed to stop the insufficiently, complete occlusion is a final goal. If the uh, so very uh, early stopping of the uh, only case uh, embolization, so neither will be rupture. So key principle for the transvenous approach is the main outflow vein should be occluded and the flow from the main feeders should be well controlled. Pressure cooker technique is a um, uh, first, um, this is uh, very difficult, but uh, also uh, as a drainage uh, route will be firstly embolized with coils uh, that is to reduce the drainage flow and to, the, uh, to avoid the uh, massive, uh, uh, massive flow reflux to the microcatheter. Uh, and so the core has a law to disturb the, uh, the flow uh, to, to, re to reduce the uh, shunt flow. Mm. Anyway, uh, this is a sort of very high technique and uh, so uh, sometimes it uh, has a complication, but it is very uh, useful to the very difficult uh, deep CD AVMs. And so now the uh, European countries also uh, recommend this uh, transvenous approach for the very uh, sort of limited cases. But unfortunately in Japan, the, such a detached microcatheter is not allowed now. So uh, we must uh, embrace uh, still in the trans arterial approach. But uh, so in the near future, in such a, so, uh, big uh, so breakthrough will coming will be coming, and uh, so we can uh, so have we have a chance to uh, embrace the ABM from trans arterial, trans venous, and uh, so maybe the, so good effect, good effect, and uh, so maybe the successful occlusion. Of course, that uh, nowadays uh, uh, our goal of the ABM treatment will be the total occlusion. So the embolization is a so the pre surgical pre radio surgical or a pre surgical uh, treatment option. Uh, so th this is my my concept. But uh, now the ABM the embolization uh, technique will be so the advanced now. Okay, so. Thank you for your attention. This is uh, my, my talk about the uh, so embolization technique or for AVM. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei, for this wonderful yeah. talk on embolization of AVMs. May I please remind you that uh, Professor Shigeru Miyachi is also the president of the Asia Australasia Federation of Interventional Therapeutic Neurodiagnostic Society. We are so fortunate to have him here for this special talk on embolization of AVMs. Now, may I please invite Professor Takazi Izumi to give his expert comments on this lecture. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for wonderful lecture, Professor Miyachi. Mm. He is a very uh, famous uh, uh, neuro, uh, neuroendovascular surgeon, and uh, he, he work he act, activate and uh, or in a neurosurgical field. And uh, he's also um, my mentor. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, it's a pleasure uh, for me uh, to hear uh, your lecture. Thank you so much. One for discussion. Uh, I would request Professor Joy Vargis to give his uh, comments. Professor Joy Vargis, are you here? It was a fantastic lecture. Thank you very much, Professor Miyachi. Thank you. Uh, I, I was, in fact, uh, thinking about the Venus approach we had been seeing, but we have not yet started in a big way in India to the Venus approach. But there are certain centers which are uh, doing. Uh, but as such, uh, because of the hemorrhagic risk uh, of uh, Venus occlusion and uh, 
incomplete penetration in the arterial side and leaving behind the arterial side uh, is always what we uh, what we are thinking about the possibilities and because of that we are not trying uh, venous approach still in a big way uh, but uh, it was a it was a very elaborate uh, uh, presentation thank you very much you have touched all the details and good studies thank you very much thank you very much thank you professor jayavardis uh, we have our own previous fellow dr vignesh are you here vignesh vignesh was with me when we used to visit your place in aichi <laughs> Vignesh, are you here? Uh, hi. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, Dr. Miyachi, it was a pleasure uh, actually uh, hearing you talk over again. It's uh, really wonderful. I've seen the way you work and it's been quite inspirational having been there. Uh, so I just had one question for you. I know that uh, you 3D print your aneurysms uh, to visualize the uh, architecture. Have you ever... Uh, did you, uh, thought about using it or do you use it on a regular basis for AVM embolization as well? 3D printing, uh, that is, uh, uh, is very effective for the aneurysm embolization, but uh, we tried to the AVM, um, it is very difficult because in, uh, so 3D printing is, um, so AVM is a shunt disease, so we must uh, so simulate simulate as feeders and drainers and all all the so components. So the, it is very difficult and also that, that is a, oh, how do you say this maybe the, like an melting chocolate, <laughs> it's like an, it's a mass only mass and that is a, no good information for us so that we don't uh, like a uh, 3D printing for ABM. We have Professor Hidehito Kimura here. Kimura Sensei. So thank you for your nice presentation, sharing your excellent uh, patient with us. So I was surprised to hearing about the transvenous approach. It's very nice, good concept to, for the next future, next to the AVM. So I have one, one question. So, I uh, so I guess you treat the patient with uh, under general anesthesia. So hmm. the how do you evaluate the safety for the patient to embrace the feeding artery? Because mm -hmm. uh, under the local anesthesia, we can use the provocative test several years ago. But recently, for the patient, you treat the under general anesthesia. So, but uh, you, you so uh, excellently occluded the so complex uh, AVM, so very uh, successfully treated. So, mm. how do you evaluate the patient if you, uh, to the uh, safety? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah, uh, in the, uh, when I was in, in the when I was working in the Nagoya University, and I, that, that is a local anesthesia, and uh, we uh, so adopt, adopted uh, the so propagating test. Maybe the doctor is me also <laughs> still now. Yeah, they are in the. Performing and in the local anesthesia, but in the general anesthesia, even in the general anesthesia, uh, we check uh, the microcatheter uh, selective angiography, and uh, if there's some is normal arteries or normal perforators, and uh, we we stop the embolization. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course, and uh, as as you said, uh, the, some uh, false uh, positive or the false negative because it's a high flow, so this is a uh, the small perforator will be hidden uh, due to the such a yes. high flow Maybe chance. Yeah. yeah, but um, in, my, in my experience, the very small feeders just before the uh, NIDAS, mm -hmm. uh, it's not so many so troubles. Troubles. Mm. So, so, so the, we think of the, and the general anesthesia has a so very big uh, uh, advantage because of the, this is a very still still and uh, no movement. So we can so evaluate the very high resolution. Uh, I don't know, we can evaluate the very small uh, feeders. Uh, that is a uh, Good resolution mm. situation. So I think uh, so. General anesthesia is not so disadvantageous uh, than the 
Uh, local anesthesia. I see. Thank you. Nice comment. Thank you. Liu. Liu is my co-host for today. Dr. Liu. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Hello Prof. Hello. Thank, thank for a nice presentation. Uh, just wanted to get ask your opinion regarding uh, those uh, embolization alone cases uh, and uh, on long-term follow-up. Uh, is there any way for us to uh, identify uh, differences between uh, recranialization and angiogenesis in long-term uh, angio follow-up? Yeah, so this goes to the question. Yeah. In the so NVCA era, in, 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 my, in my case, in the NVCA uh, embolization will so have a low risk of the recanalization, uh, but the onyx embolization alone has an, some uh, possibility of the recanalization. But uh, even in the NVCA, the, some very young patients, for example, the, late, the teenagers, embolization is successful, no shunt in the, on the angiogram, but uh, so two years, three years, four years, this is from the, the recruiting from the angiogenesis from the meningeal feeders was some very, uh, so this from, from the very uh, small feeders from the high, uh, so far, far from the far, far area. So the, we must check uh, the, such a young patient uh, the, even after the total occlusion will be achieved, but uh, so such a so long long term uh, follow up uh, shows uh, sometimes uh, so small recanalization. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we must care it. But uh, such, uh, total occlusion from the only case with the transvenous approach will be the so so very low risk of uh, recanalization. This is I think so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Sensei. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, just uh, a bit busy. Well, Sorry. Uh, thank you for your environment. Joy, this group. Uh, I, I would like to ask Professor Miyashi for one question. Mm -hmm. Hello, huh? Professor? Yeah. yeah, we yeah. Can. Uh, do you believe for the targeted uh, embracement for rupture AVM, such mm -hmm. as uh, intranatal aneurysm or just only we are venous or obduction. We treat only aneurysm or just only embolization for decrease the flow to the venous drainage. Then we, if we cannot totally occlusion of the AVM, we just only treat by targeted embolization. Is this or uh, adequate or not adequate in your opinion, professor? Uh -huh. Yeah, so in the so spirit of uh, endovascular <laughs> neurosurgeons, so we want to embolize more and more, so not, not only the aneurysm, but as uh, the itself. But uh, yeah, this is a good point. If the intranidal aneurysm is, uh, so it is, it is clear that the intranidal aneurysm rupture for yes. example, the, uh, we have uh, one, two cases of this very big, this is uh, no indication of the surgery. So grade five, five ABM, so in the, in the hemisphere, big hemisphere. And that is uh, maybe the, like a proliferative angiopathy, but, uh, it, but uh, he repeated the uh, so breeding uh, one, every year. So we embolize, we check the an angiogram. So one intranidal aneurysm is uh, here in the MCA. So at the same time, uh, that is a uh, breeding from here. So as you said, uh, we embolize only the, the, this aneurysm. No, no touch, no touch the ABM and we follow it. But uh, uh, breeding is stopped just, uh, just only to embolize the aneurysm. That's it. I think that is a way. To, because uh, this aneurysm is uh, no indication to the treatment, so too too big. So, but uh, his uh, complaint is um, so breeding. So we stop the breeding source. That's all. 
So I think there uh, one one choice, one uh, option to only the aneurysm embolization. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Itty, for joining us in spite of your busy schedule. Yes, some of my friends. We Thank have Dr. Uh, Dr. Sri Hari here, Sri Hari from Kerala. Good evening, Professor Miyachi, and uh, good evening, uh, Thank you for the excellent lecture. And uh, I have uh, come actually a few experience in doing this uh, IVM simply, but we use mostly the pre-operative uh, embolization or pre uh, radio surgery embolization. But um, I have some uh, uh, situations which I could uh, ask you here, uh, permit me. Uh, I have one case with the uh, occipital AVM and a large uh, giant aneurysm in the MC, the feeder MC. So patient is intact, only seizure is the complaint. So how do you approach it? Because most of the centers have opinions that don't touch the pathology as long as only the seizure is the complaint. But there is a thrombosis, the giant aneurysm, which is feeding the AVM, in the feeder of the AVM. So how do you approach it if you have enlightened me that will be useful for our country also? Big, big MC aneurysm? Yeah, it's a giant Thrombos. aneurysm, 2.5 centimeter. It is and the AVM, it's, it's a feeder. Feeded artery only, uh, and uh, AVM is in the occipital lobe, basically, oh. uh, so grade two or grade three. It comes between three to six, between the six, uh, mm. three, between three to six size. Mm. And MC a is a major feeder. A AVM is not a blood blood one. No, 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 nothing is blood one actually. She presented with a seizure due to the thrombosis, partial thrombosis of the aneurysm. Ah. And patient is 66 years old. It's not a young people person also. Ah. But no, what, is, what is the cause of the sort of epilepsy? That is a thrombosis. Yeah, this basically acute thrombosis of the partial thrombosis and aneurysm that is very thing because uh, it's almost touching the medial temporal area. Is that if the occipital AVM is not so big one and uh, so asymptomatic, so the thrombosis MC aneurysm should be treated. Maybe, but that is, th th I, I don't know the, an I don't know the angiogram, but uh, such a, a big uh, MC aneurysm should be so trapped and the uh, bypass plus trapped. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good way. Thank you, Sri Hari, for joining us. Uh, Professor Muthukumar, and Muthukumar, would you like to come in, sir? Uh, uh, no, no, there's nothing from my side. Thank you, Rathraj. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, participating in this webinar. Good to see you again. Ah, nice to see you. Uh, yeah. oh, long, yeah. long time not see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's a good background. I, yeah, <laughs> I I read a a question in the in the chat that I, I just want to underline the uh, your new statement that do you only do uh, embolization after gamma knife? So you mean no more pre embolization for gamma knife? Uh, I have we have no experience of the such an. Uh, uh, embolization after radio surgery, but uh, to Tohoku uh, group, Tohoku uh, or Sendai group, uh, yeah. and now the so randomized study for the before radio surgery or after radio surgery. Yeah, that oh. is, yeah. So two two points of the after radio surgery, the uh, marginal dose is so very low because. Uh, and some size, I don't know, ABM size is so big, but the totally uh, radiation, that is so mm. magical dose, dose is very low. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, no error, no targeting error. So, mm. so because of the full size of the ABM. But uh, after the embolization, neither size is shrinked and so very small size. And that radiation dose is so very uh, limited Jeez. size. Yeah, so yeah. and a high level of the so marginal dose. But uh, so risk of the recanalization of the, the other part of the, the targeting area. So which is better? So now <laughs> do we have no answer. So, but uh, uh, the Pittsburgh group recommends uh, embolization after radio surgery. They don't believe the the, the effect of the embolization before radio surgery. So I think a Pittsburgh group has, does not the right kind of, so pre radio surgical embolization. Okay. So they change it. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Miyaji. Thank you, Prof. Uh, for joining us.
Thank you. It's an honor for us to have you here. There is one more question that appeared from Dr. Surya. He has asked, what is your experience in Fontaine AVMs with Fontaine feeders? I, we, I don't like uh, to embarrass such a very <laughs> dangerous feeder. <laughs> Right. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, if the, that is a very high shunt and no, uh, no uh, normal feeders, uh, and normal arteries, uh, mm, but uh, anyway, high risk of the migration of the perforators. And also the, such a brainstem ABM has a transit feeder. So I think uh, I don't, uh, we don't uh, touch it. Touch it. Right. There are no more questions. We'll wind up this session. Uh, on behalf of the Education Committee of ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I sincerely thank the speaker, Professor Shigeru Miyachi, for coming here and enlightening us about the embolization of AVM. It was a wonderful, informative lecture. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Professor, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Professor Rizumi, I thank, thank you. you on behalf of the Education thank Committee. Thank you. And the Thank you, Professor. Yes. So, yeah. until, so until next Saturday evening, 6 p.m., it is bye-bye from all of us. Thank you all for joining and bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liu, Thank you. for joining. Thank you.